Zach Moss. And I'm AJ Fenny. And this is Hippie Not Hippie. And boy, where did we leave off last week, AJ? Uh, you went in you went in for your second ketamine shot. Wow, Treatment, yeah. Right? Yeah, it's amazing. Going through ketamine makes you forget what you had talked about last week. <laughs> oh yeah, so you're you're noticing uh, some side effects other I, than uh, just the I think onset s- hallucinations and transformation into an Asian woman yeah. and, <laughs> and pillow uh, hands. And pillow hands, pillow yeah, hands. Pillow yeah. hands. Um, yeah, I had. Uh, yeah, I think I've had two. I guess since the last time we spoke. Okay, because uh, I've gone you up. Were at, you were at what 30? 30 each arm is where you started. Yeah, and, and then you. So let's let's start with the second session. You go into the second session, and they've moved me up to eighty. So I'm getting forty in each arm, and I will say that um, almost immediately going in, I was like, I hope I have the same room. I liked that room. I had a good trip. <laughs> I really, <laughs> I really. Hope how many funny. how many rooms do they have? I think they have four rooms. And there's what? There's Harley Davidson theme, no. pirate theme, yeah. castle would, theme, yeah. and uh, that would be great. It's like, hey, can I get the Playboy room? Yeah, I'm the really, grotto. The grotto. I, I just want to hang in the hot tub, get sweaty. Um, but yeah, yeah so there's four rooms that are recommended ketamine activity. By the way, hot tub, hot tub, hot yeah. tub on K. Yeah, kitties in the pool. They thought kitties didn't like water. <laughs> so yeah, second one, I went in. And with normal anxiety, I'm, my anxiety did seem to be a lot less than it was before the first injection. I do want to say that. Yeah. But I had started to make predetermined outcomes where I was like, I hope it's the same room. Yeah. And I was going in alone. So already I'm like, I'm going to be brave and do drugs alone. Oh, yeah. Because Marciana wasn't there. Yeah. So this is your second time getting real high in a long time. Yeah. And so I went in and the first thing I noticed was we walked by the room I wanted to be in, and I. Did you say some shit? Not, were you like not verbally, but my eyes were. Was like, the door closed? The door was closed. I so I had a later session than normal, and you know when, like if you watch a movie and you've like maybe you had your heart broken by some woman, and uh, they're <laughs> they're with a new boyfriend or something, and they're walking by you, and you see him, but you're not gonna say, but you kind of stare like. If I watch a movie with my ex and their <laughs> new lover in it, like, what the no. fuck are you talking about? Like, if I go to the movies and I'm no. leaving and I see them, like, what the fuck do you mean? Okay, hold on. I might have more brain damage for this drug than I realize. I, um, you know when you have your heart broken? Yeah. Okay. And then you see that person on the street. Yeah. Right? But you decide you're not going to say anything to him. You just kind of see him. And that feeling that you get where you're like, ah, uh, right? Yeah. That's what I had when I saw the first room. <laughs> <laughs> and the door was closed. It was very much like, oh, someone's someone's in my chair. Yeah, someone's in your room. <laughs> someone's someone else is getting pillow hands right now. So so we walked by that and already, unfortunately, I was like, oh, oh man. And then I went into the other room and tried to be like, oh, this is going to be fine. Uh, the controls were not as convenient to use in the chair. Like, what, the are first- the, what are the options? Just up, down, or do these things have heat? Do they massage? No, no, it's an up, down. But the, the first room I was in, the chair. Wow, con- so you couldn't figure out how to I- go up yeah. or down. <laughs> well, <laughs> so yeah. what kind of button w- was it? Was there like so- an... An up arrow and a down arrow? Was there a knob? You could only turn two directions? <laughs> like, what the fuck? I mean, so, first chair, there's a circle, and you just push forward backwards. It's very easy to figure out, and it's inside the arm. So, okay. inside the armrest. That's important. Yeah, yeah. Because, like, when you're, like, numb, you can just be like, oh, Oh, good. fuck. I'm Is this one on, on, the, on the side? It's on the side. So, now I'm, like, reading Braille before and it's i felt like such an idiot because she's like what are you doing i was like i'm trying to figure out this chair so how many dots is up and how many dots is down you have to go all the way forward and find the way to get back up 
and then you go all the way over. There's a middle button that I don't know what it was. Maybe that just drops you into the portal of hell. I didn't touch it. I was very afraid of that button. <laughs> Where you just like up down? What's this one? Oops! That one just straps you to the chair. Yeah, boom! That's the one Uh-oh. they push if you're freaking out. Yeah, yeah. So I I got the first injection. There were things that I noticed because I am the way I am. There was a chip out of the tile, and already I was like, oh, I'm getting a bullshit room. Like I'm getting the jankiest room available. Oh man. Was it bigger or smaller or identical in shape? It was mostly identical in shape, but the door was to my left where the first time the door was to the right, which shouldn't mean anything. But when you have slight OCDs, I was like, oh, this is screwing everything up. And uh, then there was a halo. This this actually made, I think, a big part of the trip. So there's a like a ring uh, illuminating something that looked like a spotlight was on it. It was highlighting a sprinkler head. And I'm just sitting back there trying to be open hearted about this whole experience. And I'm just going, man, I should have just done this in an alley. This is the most rinky dink bullshit. I, I that- like the idea, though, that that's how it works, is that the first one, they're like fun drugs and there's like lights and shit. And then the second one, they're like, you just get one light and a sprinkler head. Yeah. And then like by the, by the fourth one, you're like literally just sitting in therapy and they're like, all right, now it's time to talk about everything horrible. (laughs) You know, it's just like, they're like, we can't drop him into it right away. You know, we got to just gradually get him to the point where it's like, all right, now it's therapy time. It also made me wonder that the, the, cause the second time I was alone, they were like, oh, they weren't going to do this when my wife was here. Someone that was sober was going to be like, this is, this is kitty bullshit. Like, he's, <laughs> like, come on now. Have higher standards or something. But anyway, it was me fine detailing these things and predetermining how it was going to ruin my trip. And so they gave me the first shot and I tried to calm down. I was like, ah, here we go. And I mean, sure enough, I kept focusing on the light. And then what happened was the light dissolved into everything else and the light was no longer there. And then I just was like, ah, started tripping. And then the second shot came in and I, when they left, I have a distinct memory of going circles. Like that was the important thing, whatever circles was. And I journaled about it later trying to figure it out. But Zach, I swear, man, at one point it was like the whole chair was on a track. And so if I'm facing this way, I'm in this chair, it just picked me up. And I went around this way looking at different voids, but the the structure of the void would change. So if you imagine like east, west, north, south. So if you imagine void, which is nothing. Right. But when I say void, that's what I keep calling it is the so, boundaries of the walls are dissolved. It's like the the blackness within the center <laughs> of what? of an asshole. <laughs> I knew somehow we were going to get back to body parts and is and- there but then but then the, the the striation of the of the asshole changes. I I'm going to be honest, I hope this part of this this conversation doesn't make me see nothing but buttholes. <laughs> <laughs> when I go in for the next one. Well, I mean, or, or like, I don't know. It's like there's a hole in the ground, but the ground around the hole keeps changing. I don't know. Yeah. Am I understanding this right? No. So imagine a change of scenery, right? So imagine a track, right? So imagine a circle and you're in a cart that is going to be moved like this, Right, but you're constantly looking. He, forward. he just moved his hand around. Oh, in, a, yeah. in a circle. Yeah. So clockwise, that was important for some reason. Yeah. But doors on the left, clockwise. Yeah. So now imagine how a compass is set up, where you have north, south, east, west. Yeah. So I would, like, I was being moved, and then stopped at every one of those quarter points, which was strange. The first one, I was like, "Huh," and then I got there. And I was watching just the shapes and the structures of everything change and the feeling of just the structure of this whatever present position I'm looking at. And I remember going, oh, I think I understand this. And then I didn't even get that out. I just went, I think I under, and it went, nope. And I heard click like a roller coaster. And then it just went zik doom and then took me to the north point. And I was like, what the fuck? And then it was moving real quick. 
And before I even got a chance to really focus on it, it dropped me to like the Eastern point. And then I was like, hold on for a second. And it didn't want that. So then it took me back to the starting point. And at that point I lost a lot of feeling because everything was too much. And then I watched everything. It's hard to put into words, but everything that was in the room, like just started to unfold upon itself. Wow. So it sounds like the room is pretty, pretty important for what happens in the trip. I think so. Because I was just really thrown all over the place and jarred. But the lesson I pulled out of it (laughs) was that uh, I shouldn't be trying to predetermine things because the trip wasn't that bad. And um, so the lesson of everything, I think I spun that in a circle, uh, was I had predetermined that the light on the ceiling was going to fuck the trip up. I determined that the chip was going to fuck the trip up. I determined that the chair was negative, like all of this stuff. So doing ketamine helped you realize that where the door was in the room and the button was on the chair and the light was on the ceiling at the end of the day, really didn't matter that much. I don't know, because I did another one, and I went back to the main (laughs) room, and man, it was good. Yeah. (laughs) (laughs) But I also think I just went in by myself. I was nervous. There were a lot of things. Do you think you feel pressure to have to feel like you take something out of these? uh, Well, I'm, yeah. I mean, I don't feel pressure, but there is a moment of seeking. And what I realized during the second experience was because Marciana wasn't there. I think my mind was trying to almost lock in a memory while it was doing it. And because I was focused too hard on trying to remember these points, I think it took me out of it. I also realized that if I have to pee really bad, ketamine's like, you got to pee, you're done. Like it's, it was so strange. I had to pee so bad that it pulled me out of it. And I think I messed up going into it because I had orange juice a uh, uh, herbal tea and some water. And I think my bladder was full. And then I went in and you, it snapped you out of it. You could walk just fine. You got up to go pee. Oh no, there's not walking. Just, I hit the button. I hit the, Hey, I need help. I'm going to pee in your chair. Like that's, they're going to like, so what they come, what do they do? So a nurse comes in and they're, and they say, are you okay? Yeah. Yeah. Cause like, that's how I people sound. Got to pee. Yeah. And they're like, okay. And then, they won't touch you. I don't know what that is. They just give you an arm like this. And so then I reach. It's really bad, but I always go for the elbow. I don't know why. Like, I'll do that for jokes, like where I squeeze someone's elbow meat, and I still do that in ketamine. But I'm using this as a, a point to hold myself. So up. a nurse comes in and helps K out, K hold AJ out. KJ, of what KJ. is K? <laughs> 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 a nurse, co- yeah. nurse, KJ needs help. <laughs> so, so that was a different button, though, not the metal button on. Yeah, the not the not, okay, not the portal. So, uh, so then this nurse comes in. T- right. Tell, tell me about the nurse. Have you met the nurse? Do you know the nurse's name? Who, who is mm. the nurse? It, she seemed familiar. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So, and she was like, she asked if I was okay. I said I needed to use the restroom, and then she put her arm out. Very like, you know, when you go to a fancy restaurant and they have the napkin hanging over the thing where you're like, huh, or they sh- a fine bottle of wine, that type of thing. Yeah. That's what I felt like she was doing. Put the arm out like. Yeah. Ma- I, next time that happens, maybe I'll bow her. Like, I, like go bow to bow. Yeah. I mean, so she helps you up and then helps well, you w- to the restroom. Yes. Is there a restroom attached to this room? No. So that's where it gets tricky. You have to. Uh, you've got to battle reality for a moment. Like, so you're very, you know, it's very So numbing. you're not in a wheelchair. No, not in a wheelchair. How far I'm do walking. you got to go? I got to go. Uh, what? Uh, maybe 25 yards. So. And I, cause I've got to go down towards reception then so i make a right going that's 11 hallway. ketamine city blocks for those yeah <laughs> <laughs> all right no but i do remember now that we're talking about it because i was starting to come back into my body kind of hard when i needed i realized i had to go to the bathroom and the woman the nurse she said well you're you're walking very well 
And I think I said something like, well, maybe you get on this ship and then you tell Captain how to drive. Yeah. <laughs> I remember that. And then I said it and I was like, oh, no. And she said nothing. That's where I was like, what a nice person. Not to go, oh, you're. Oh, yeah. She's probably yeah. like, well, yeah, let's just get this boy. Yeah. Let's... She's like, I do not want to clean up a <laughs> giant puddle of piss. Yeah. Thank you for hitting the button and not just going, waterfalls. Yeah. She's like, if you notice, these chairs do smell. Yeah. But then I went to the bathroom, and after I, I went to the bathroom. She um, wasn't in there with you. No, she no. She turned you loose in there. No. Uh, yeah. I was like, Does, I was like you're good. She goes, I'll stay out to? here. Like, Is there like a ketamine like handle you know, above the no. toilet where you grab on and just piss all over the floor? God, that would be amazing. <laughs> it's like you just was, hold on to a, like a pull-up bar. How was your aim, AJ? Do you, think you, do you think you did good? Did you have to? Did you have to wipe some pee off the seat? Did it, you even care? It was pretty good. I, I, the last time I was here, I want to say something. Someone either misspelled something or they've done this intentionally. I believe it's supposed to say, please flush toilet properly. It says, please flash toilet properly. Um. And when I read that, I just was like, I'm flashing this toilet. Like, <laughs> I'm just wiggling for no reason. Yeah, that was the second one. I mean, I, I, I so and then the nurse takes you home, and uh, no, the nurse took me back to the room, and uh, I well, was able to sit that was down. Home. Yeah, that was home, <laughs> and then kind of regained K composure. KJ's home. Yeah, not AJ's home. <laughs> I love the idea of being KJ. I do too. I just want to put a. I almost want to get equipment where I just show up, and they're like, "Are you ready?" And I just put like a like a, a astronaut helmet on. And I'm just like, KJ is ready for blast off. And they're, at that point, they're going to go, oh, we don't think you're using this for therapy anymore. <laughs> we think, we think we're just your bartender. I'm like, put a tip jar out. Yeah. It, well, I do think it's interesting because it sounds like the message you've been getting consistently on these trips is, uh, you need to just chill the fuck out and let yeah. the, let, let the ride take you, you know? Yeah. Like, uh, yeah. Like, but you keep trying to drive. Yeah. That is, that was definitely what it was. And the last one, I went up to 100 and Marciana was there. And I have the audio. Well, she does. I couldn't listen to all of it because I think I did hit a therapeutic state on that one. Yeah. And it was a little hard to listen to. Um, at some point, I just, when I was deep in it, she goes, I hit the record button after you stop. I guess I was just going. Did you start talking oh, about your feelings? Oh, I was doing that. Uh, I guess. I mean, oh, it bothered God, me. God, disgusting. To it. <laughs> Gross. <laughs> but it was just. God, what if? <laughs> well, what if that keeps happening? Like, are you going to quit doing these? Going to this drug doctor? If, oh God, I don't. No, I'm kidding. I don't know. So but, so. No, so good though. Right? Yeah, so I got a yeah. I felt really good like afterwards, and then Marcy and I was like, "Do you want to listen to all of it before you go into therapy?" And we started. And I was like, "Shut it down. I don't want to listen to that part." Well, man, and because, she's there too. I mean, I guess yeah. That's, that's well, because she was like, strange. She's you like, know? "You said a lot. You were pretty verbal this time." Yeah. I'm also still concerned whether or not she's I'm like, yelling. "You kept saying you want a divorce." <laughs> that would be <laughs> terrible. <laughs> But I, you know what I did do uh, on the second one? I realized every experience should just be unique. Yeah. Um, and I wasn't doing that. And we've talked about this with comedy, where sometimes after like an early show, I will predetermine like, oh, the late show is going to be just the same. And then oh, it's yeah. different. So you don't, you don't give them that opportunity. Um, but what I did on that second trip was I had hoped for the same room. I had them put the lights out the same way. I listened to the same music and I put the same thing on the television. And I Okay, so you're kind of like running your own scientific tests here because you're like, did the room send me to the chair wheel roller coaster? Right. <laughs> or did it, did KJ send me there? Yeah. KJ yeah. was like, no. Um But yeah, I think that. A, a playlist, a new playlist. I wore the same clothes. Like, I really think I accidentally went in and thought I would just repeat what I did the first time. 
And, wow, and you wore the same clothes. So it sounds to me, AJ, like you I, didn't but, actually learn that much because no. you went back and you're like, I'm going to control the <laughs> shit out of it this time. Right. I'm going to wear the same clothes. I'm going to listen to the same music. I'm going to do everything the same. And KJ went, you're going to pee your pants. <laughs> Did, well, did you have to piss this the third no, time? No, the third time. So, so you've got your fluids down now, right? I do have my fluids down and my meals. But the second time was when I decided to try to repeat everything. Okay. Um, the third time, I wore a different shirt. We went in. I let the lights be in the different side of the room. I put on jellyfish instead of the redwoods. I was like, this is going to be great. I had a brand new playlist that was like just kind of psychedelic ambiance. Um, so it just kind of adds to the texture of whatever's going on. I could probably get, I don't know. I'd have to look. I, I keep questioning whether or not it would be more therapeutic to put blinders on, like go ahead and put the eye blinds on. But I, yeah. I hate to admit this out loud, but I kind of enjoy watching the room transform into nothing. Like yeah. there's something exciting about it. Um, This time I, I hit a point where I don't know if it was too, like if I hit a traumatic moment and I blacked it out. Yeah. <clears throat> But so at the beginning, when it came on, it came on pretty good. And then from the audio that I did listen to, you can hear me going, oh, like that. And then I just made the word cactus like three times. And then I want something about going back to a garden. So going into the garden, I don't know what that means. Yeah. And then <clears throat> there's a, like a, a little bit of time mumbling and then I remember in my head going, like being asked if I wanted to go inside. Yeah. And I was like, like, I felt like it was the drug or whatever was going on was asking for consent if I wanted to go real deep this time. And I was like, I thought I was like, yeah, I'll go inside. Let's do this. It's good. It's rock. Like, I thought that's how I said it. Uh, in the audio, you hear me go, me, go Go inside me now. <laughs> oh, yeah, sure. Okay. I'm ready. And then as soon as I consented, like I, everything I was watching just turned. Like it was like it flipped me on my side. And then I was in this round, red, fleshy tube type thing. And it, I generically thought I was like, oh, maybe this is like the birth canal. Like maybe I'm back in the uterine wall. Yeah. And then uh, like maybe that's why you've been fucked up your whole life. Something happened when I was in there. Yeah. Like in the uterine wall. Yeah. Maybe. Like, I don't know. But I know I don't remember a lot visually after that. But like maybe your mom hit her stomach on something. Maybe she was just going, ha, ha, ha. <laughs> yeah. Or maybe, maybe your dad was, you know, pounding it. Oh, no. <laughs> that would be the worst. <laughs> I had to go back to being in there and going, stop it. Stop that. I'm just punching my dad's dick. <laughs> so you, but you, yeah, you I don't think you were reborn. That's what I think. Cause then the weird thing is you hear my voice. It, drastically changes and it seems childlike and i shut it off after this because i couldn't it was kind of triggering i didn't know what was going on but you just hear me going no i'm not i'm not bad I'm so not how bad. many I'm more good. sessions do you have i'm in the midpoint so i have three more before my integration is done and that's where they kind of know where your dose is and then after that you set up maintenance doses so huh. so, do so you, yeah did you like take a test before or like Here's the thing, like, how do they gauge the effectiveness of this therapy? Like, like, did you oh. like take some sort of like internal inventory or whatever before you started doing this, and then like you're going to take one after? Oh, well, that's where the so the journaling comes in, and then my talk therapist. I talked yeah. to him about it. Um, I just didn't want to pay for two therapists involved in the same thing. So it is all. From what I've understood, it's all self-paced. And I feel like I'm making progress, but this fourth one is when I'm supposed to start targeting things. Like yeah. the first three are kind of like, this is the drug, this is oh, what it man. does. So now you got to work. Yeah, now I got to start getting into the fucking gross shit. I got to go into the portal, I think. But it's fun. I mean, I don't, it's, it's fun. It's interesting. I feel like 
I also found out why you get slower doses, like lower doses, and they ramp you up. I thought it was just so they didn't blow your brains all over the place. But it's got to do with your liver. So they said that there is, it's not been proven, but if they gave you like 120 milligrams up front, it could do slight liver, liver damage. But so what happens is they start you with 60, and I think that's why they split it between 230s, is your liver then recognizes the chemical and it can break it down. Uh, she goes, that's why also you're going to drop in harder and faster th- the higher the doses and why you drop back into your body faster. Okay. So they, I didn't know that your liver was like, uh, like your immune system. Like it's with different things. It's like, Oh, I know how to process. Yeah. yeah. I think about, it's interesting. Cause I think about like how much I drank in my twenties. And I'm just yeah. like, the more I learn about the liver processing sugars and all that stuff, I'm like, Jesus, my liver was just like, Rocky, basically in every fight before he ever won. <laughs> yeah, man. <laughs> Livers are amazing, and they do bounce back. That's why I always try to, you know, if I go hard for a while, I try to chill out for a while. Yeah. So, I don't know. Up yeah. and down, the old liver. Man. So, uh, yeah, that's. I guess that's what I've been up to. <laughs> fuck yeah, man. That uh, sounds fun. I mean, I think it's... I told I told my therapist as well, and I I trust other people to let me know if they start going. Hey man, you're getting a little too far out there. You know, you're 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 talking about how ketamine is like. Hey, I need to quit my job and I got to get to a hut. Like when I start getting to that point, like maybe go, hey, reel it back, and I'll go. Okay, I'll I'll stop after about three or four more. Well, do you know what's crazy is there's this guy that they. Uh, <clears throat> Like you can actually become, they found that like being generous and uh, like giving stuff away actually creates like a similar like opiate response in the brain, you know? So you can get addicted to giving things away. Yeah. Like there's the, there's like certain examples of people that are like so into it. It's like they've given every, like literally they're like in the same state as a drug addict like a heroin addict because they've like given all their money away ever they they'll work but they'll give their time away they sold their house to donate it like Whoa. there's like people that have gone like and yeah they're basically homeless in the in the streets because they've so, you know given every like yeah so it's uh yeah it's crazy it's, it's like what a hoarder fe- like fears well yeah and it, it's like uh you know, Bill Gates, you know, fucking donating like all that money. It's like, oh, you're just chasing that donation dragon, Bill. <laughs> you know? Yeah. You fucking are, are all of them, you know? It's like, oh, they it, they can they get high off of it. Do you, you think know? they start small? Like they either donate, like they give a, a couple coins to someone on the street or they donate to like a, a charity or. Like, yeah. And then he's like, I pledge half of my wealth. Yeah. I'm, <laughs> God, I'm so fucking high right now. Ah. Uh. Uh. But yeah, cheese does it too. So I don't know. Wait, the string cheese, the band? No, oh. <laughs> <laughs> just uh, just you know, cheese itself. It produces like a response similar to like an opiate response. Really? In your brain. Yeah. Dude, do you think that's why they have grilled cheese sandwiches at <laughs> like hippie shows? I mean, I think that's why everyone pretty much likes cheese. You know. What's your favorite cheese? Oh boy, uh, I would have to say I eat a lot of I eat a lot of like gorgonzola. Oh yeah, that food. gorgonzola. I like the funky cheeses. Yeah, I, I don't know. I but yeah, I I like them all. How about you? I yeah, gorgonzola. I I was introduced to that late. I was a blue cheese guy, but then I got introduced to gorgonzola, and I was I like, I mean, they're kind of the same shit. Yeah, I feel like gorgonzola is a little stankier. Yeah, it's more <clears throat> foot footy. Yeah, I, I don't know what the fuck the term would be. But... <laughs> it's more footy. Yeah, you know, it's just a little bit more like end of the feet. day. I just want to eat feet, but uh... but yeah, I don't know, man. I talked about how was your you were out on the road. Uh, yeah, I was last week. I went and did a run that you and I had done. Uh, like. Fuck, what was that? In twenty sixteen or something? Twenty seventeen? Might have been twenty seventeen, yeah. But yeah, the End of the Mountain Gods uh casino and yeah. Mescalero. Mescalero, New Mexico. Yeah, and Spin it's Spin Zone. Close to 
Rudizio or Rudizio. Rudizio. So I don't I don't really know what's going on. But the last time I'd gone there with you, like it was fucking horrible, man. Yeah. <laughs> like it's a beautiful casino and everything. Dude, the, the room, landscape of it is great, right? Yeah, it's fucking insanely beautiful in a place in the country where like literally there's no reason to go there unless you like live in El Paso or one of these like small towns in southern New Mexico. So uh beautiful cool place but when we were pulling into town i don't know if you remember this but there was that barbecue yes. restaurant that was burnt to the ground yeah and the sign was still there right in front of this burned out building and it just said the oh, smoke, still smoking still barbecue, smoking or something. barbecue. Yeah. <laughs> the place is fucking burnt to the ground they looked like they had torn down the ban- the burned down building but the sign was still there uh. Should have changed it to still smoldering barbecue. Yeah, no shit. Yeah, you and I went there, and it was one of our first like road gigs, I think, together. Yeah, I think we had that in Albuquerque. Yeah. At the time, it was booked from with different people. Or it was a different location on the second one, right? Yeah, I can't even... Was it Route 66? I don't think so. It was a casino. Okay, because, uh, man, I did not recognize this fucking casino at all, but he's like, we remodeled, and I'm like... Nah, it all was, right. And then, like, I was blurring all these runs together because I went through Farmington one time to a casino yeah. there, and it just like, yeah. I can't remember the name of the casino I was we were in when we did it. I'd done it a couple times because I also did it with Lund, and uh, and then I did it one time on my own. But it was um, the stage was huge. Okay, so the in one that, that other place. Okay, and it was like, that's what I was remembering. This one, the stage was it was kind of it was inside of a giant room though, so it was like a pit with a stage, then a restaurant that sat like a hundred people behind it, and then slot machines. So like oh, literally, yeah. like when I'm like building tension for my jokes there, like it'd just be like, <laughs> ding, 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 <laughs> you know, like people fucking winning and shit, jackpot. <laughs> the the other place in uh, Mescalero. It was fucking horrible when we did it. Like, I remember I ate shit, like, so bad. You got up, and you were having a little trouble. You were like, I'm going to go to the, you know, good old crowd work. And you're like, hey, we got any birthdays in the house Uh, today? And this guy's like, yeah. Yeah, that's (laughs) it. Yes, me. And you're like, how old are you today? And he's like, 91 or something. (laughs) (laughs) I'll never. As soon as that happened, I remember having a moment of clarity and looking around and just thinking, oh, shit. Yeah, fuck, man. Like, and there was like one table of people like in their fifties that were like kind of having a yeah. good time. They were then, the young folk. Oh yeah, and then there was just yeah, these fucking everybody was like seventy or eighty years old. So I went down there uh, expecting with, the worst. Yeah, I went down there with uh, this uh, Denver comic uh, Lisa Lane. She was just actually on the Netflix How to Build a Sex Room uh is this a show yeah it's a show on netflix it's called how to build a sex room i guess she responded to like an ad for homeowners and uh that was like do you want to make your bedroom sexier and like she had like gone through a divorce recently or whatever was like yeah sure my kids are in the house whatever i want to <laughs> make my bedroom se-. they built like a whole addition onto her house there's like a there's like a fountain that's like made what? out of anal beads <laughs> Wait, so they built a sex dungeon into a like a bedroom into like a sex dungeon? Well, no, they added a whole room onto her house. So uh, basically it, it was like they added a, a sex room onto her house and there's like this really nice coffee table that looks like it has like ass imprints in it <laughs> to like with like folding legs and shit like uh it's like a clockwork orange type shit. Yeah, but but what's funny is she like she's like yeah we had to do a lot of work because it was made for TV so uh, she's married now uh, her husband Joe is a, a he came on the trip too because I was like yeah I, I I wanted to bring my girlfriend but she ended up having a show so uh, it didn't work out but uh, yeah so her husband came too on on the trip and uh, but yeah he built like a a fucking fake bookcase so basically on her bedroom now there's a bookcase that opens into the sex room (laughs) that is and she and she like her first her opening joke in her act is about how she looks like she's about to like ask for a manager or whatever like she looks like a a karen yeah and uh and but yeah she's super cool so anyways uh i love the idea i've always loved the idea of having a bookshelf I think Scooby Doo did this, yeah, and turning it and then having a hidden room. 
Oh yeah. Sex no. room adds a whole other level. Yeah, no. Well, and I so it was super cool. And well, what's funny is is now it's more like a guest room. Like her kid like sleeps there when he goes over. <laughs> like, Could you imagine? We uh we've got this guest room used to kind of be a fuck palace, and you've got to go through the bookshelf. I would. I want a bookcase door though. I don't know. There's something about a secret room that I always think's really cool. Yeah. When I was a kid, I always used to look for them in houses. I'd be like, this doesn't add up. Yeah. You know, there's a space in this house that doesn't quite add up. Uh, is it? Where's it at? It's like between the shower and the stairs. Okay. Kinda. Yeah, there's like some space in there. Huh. I think I heard rats crawling around in there one time, but oh they <laughs> they starved to death eventually. <laughs> I'll never forget the time that one fell between the shower well, no, and that's that, what I'm talking about. That yeah. space there. And then we went up to the attic yeah. and then just dropped poison <laughs> into holes in the Which seems terribly irresponsible, but being in a shower while an animal is scratching against the plastic <laughs> while you're going, Oh, this is fucking terrifying. I mean, the animal had fallen and was trapped down there. So I think by giving us you know, we gave it poison and I'm sure you know, I mean better well, than we just had a weird today. smell for two days and, yeah. and uh yeah, I don't, right? Poison's better than starving to death? I, think I don't so. know. I've never starved to death or been poisoned, so that's both yeah. seem kind of shitty. It, yeah. But, but I mean, gonna what were we going to do? Rescue? Like, launch an Wait. operation into the walls He's of the house to save a, a fishing pole and you just start wheeling it like a fishing line or something and go grab it, you buddy. You hook it. I don't think there was a humane way to get it out. You could like lower a glue trap down there oh, and that stick seems it terrible. and then bring it up and that's have to <laughs> de-glue it or something. Yeah, once it, once it's on the glue trap, it's that's done. Well, yeah, and God, and then we had that rat that. <laughs> oh, I feel pretty bad about that one. I really thought I was scooping him out. Yeah, well, you were scooping him out so we could hit him with tennis rackets. So, yeah, like, this I, this sounds very inhumane, but we had a, a big rat that we were trying to get <laughs> out of the house, and it had gotten under the TV stand. And I was like, "All right, I'm gonna put the broomstick under there, and I'm gonna do like a cha 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 cha, like a back and forth thing to scare it out." And then you guys would kind of soft tennis racket out the door or something. Yeah, yeah, we were trying to direct it out the door, but man. Rats aren't as strong as we thought they were because when AJ tried to knock it out with the broom, it just fucking killed it. <laughs> yeah, I kind of went, ha, I got nervous. Well, yeah, we were all very afraid of the rat, by the way, like yeah. more afraid of the rat than we probably needed to be. There were three grown men in here. I feel like someone stopped by and was like, what are you doing? We went next door. Oh, yeah, we did. Jake lived next door, and we went next door, and we're like, hey, we got a rat. We're terrified. And he was like, well, I have tennis rackets. Yes. And we're like, cool, because like, we didn't have tennis rackets. <laughs> no. We had to get those. We needed weapons. I think a tennis racket. Yeah, and then, uh, and then Max was staying here, too. Oh, that's who it was. It was Max Fine. <laughs> yeah, I forgot. Yeah, I forgot about that, too. And then I saw him. And he's like, yeah, man, that was pretty weird. Uh <laughs> yeah, pretty weird to be staying on the couch roughly about seven feet from where you just had a murder happen. Yeah. But he's living in New York. I'm sure he's I mean, used to that rats. rat that rat died super quick, you know? Way and better I mean, than the shower rat. I mean, yeah, the poison, I don't know. You know, I've seen, I tried to save a poison squirrel. And, uh... Ooh. Because I thought, well, because when a squirrel's poisoned, at first I was like, maybe he's just high as fuck. It's Denver, you know? Like <laughs> Maybe he kind of did some edibles. Yeah, maybe he ate some edibles out of the trash. Because I've seen that happen where they, like, fucking, you know, I used to own a dispensary. Yeah. <laughs> <You know? laughs> but, like, yeah, I've you know, but fucking, yeah. So I was like, maybe, you know, and he ran up a tree and then he fell backwards and was just hanging on with his back paws. And I was like, man, he might just be... High as shit. So I put him in a little box with some water and a blanket. And Wait, ma- and- what? <laughs> Wait, well, hold on. <laughs> like, I <laughs> I just imagine this little squirrel pulling the blanket up and being like, thanks, Zach. Well, there's like, he was on the tree by the sidewalk and there's dogs walking by and he's like panicking. So I'm like, well, if he is dying, I'm going to give him a nice little bed yeah. to die. So I tucked him in in this little box. <laughs> With some water, and Megan's like, what the fuck are you doing? Like, it's fucking, it's, it's you know, and I'm like, this poor little guy, you know, yeah. nursing back to health. 
And uh, no, I went and did a show that night and came home, and man, he's dead as fuck. So. Yeah. Well, at least he had a nice place to die. Yeah, so I just, you know, walked that box over the trash. It was like, bam. <laughs> but, uh, you, you tried so hard, and then at the end you're like, ah, so it's just trash now. Yeah, I mean, I don't know if they get into those rat traps. Like, it took me a long time to realize that all those weird little black boxes all over the place are rat traps. Oh, or They're yeah. not rat traps. They're rat poison, where the rat can go in there and eat the poison. Right. And, and then, then you got to be careful that the dog gets a hold of the rat. Right, because then the dog. Could I potentially... think the poisons aren't designed like that. Like ever since you know, eagles started dying, the symbol of America. I Wait, think they what? were like. Well, yeah, I don't know if you remember that there used to be. We used to be worried that bald eagles were endangered or whatever. Part of it was that there was like pesticides that would leak into the river, and uh, okay, and fucking into the fish and everything. And then the eagles would like eat the fish and shit. And then it was making their eggs so thin that when the eagles would sit on them, they would scramble their own eggs. Jesus Christ. No, I yeah. didn't hear about it. But this. then there was also, I think a problem, you know, cause people were like, we can't just be poisoning rats and killing like every bird that eats a fucking rat or every, you know, creature that comes across a yeah. dead rat because, you know, who doesn't like a good dead rat right? You know, <laughs> out there in the animal kingdom, you know, that's fucking, it's prime scavenging. Yeah. You know? Yeah. I mean, that's probably good picking for a bird to find a well, fat rat. And a poisoned animal is going to act all weird. So, so easy pickings. So, yeah, they're more likely to get preyed upon by, you know, foxes or whatever. What are they, other animals are like, hey, you don't want to eat that uh, rat because it's just been sitting on the corner doing, like, staring at its hands, moving it back and forth the whole time. We think it's just tripping. Yeah, I uh, I don't know. I hate. But back to the show. We we uh, oh, we went yeah. far out. Oh fuck, we did, man. So, Mescalero. So yeah, Mescalero with Lisa from How to Build a. Where the hell the fuck did we get to poison? I I can't remember. Somehow, Jesus Christ. All yeah, right. we talked about that whole story about <laughs> killing rats, <laughs> and now. Oh, fuck me. But yeah, so I but the, don't know. The funnest part was like, I think when we did it in Mescalera, it was after the show. Like we we still had fun. Yeah. Because we stayed in the casino. So, three, two, one. Spin, spin zone. zone. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. We got into the motherfucking spin zone. Which was like Wheel of Fortune. Jack. It was just a slot machine where if you did well enough, a yeah. Wheel of Fortune thing would spin. Yeah. But like we put in 20 bucks and we played that machine for oh. like three hours. I think we ended up winning $16. Yeah. But, like, but the funnest thing was we weren't waging high. So when we would hit, if we were waging high, we might have won some real money. Yeah. But any time it went to the spin zone. We were reacting as though we hit the jackpot. People were coming by. Oh, yeah. We'd like build up fans of people like watching <laughs> us. Like, these guys are on fire. They're really winning. And then they'd be like, what the fuck? <laughs> They're not winning. $16? <laughs> They're up? Or, you know, so you have $36 in the machine? What the? I literally remember one person goes, why are you so excited? <laughs> <laughs> Do you remember the cooler guy? Like, oh. I remember telling Zach, I was like, you got to watch out for coolers. They're going to cool down our heat. And this guy sat down next to us. And I just remember you looking over going, hey, man. And he's like, hey. And he goes, are you a cooler? Are you trying to cool us? <laughs> <laughs> no, man. I, I always, whenever they switch out somebody around me in the casino, I always accuse them of being a cooler. Yeah. Like, <laughs> No, man. I fucking. Yeah. I uh, Joe uh, is a is a pilot. So he makes, he you know, he was. He was like, let's let's play some blackjack, you Who's know. Who's Joe? Lisa's husband. We were on oh, the trip. gotcha. Yeah, so, yeah, yeah. Like, Sorry. So we end up playing blackjack, and I'm like, I don't have that kind of money. And he's like, here, I'll buy you, buy you in so we can play some blackjack. And we were, like, killing it. And then they brought this fucking person over. And I was like, you're the goddamn cooler, aren't you? <laughs> and then we fucking started losing again. Oh. And I was like, and I was like, I was like, man, this the fucking cooler's here. Dude, the casino sent that dude in. And then, and then, uh, then they sent over this fucking guy that looked like Thomas Jefferson. Okay. But he had like really long fingernails. Like like 
Like if Thomas Jefferson was a vampire? I don't fucking know, man. <laughs> but like, I remember Lisa going to this guy. She's like, yeah, you give me vibes like you used to work on a boat on an island or something. And the, it like weirded the guy out. And he's like, baby. <laughs> <laughs> How do you know things about and like, me? Yeah. And I'm like, he's like, well, it was more of an atoll. But, uh, <laughs> you know, I, I don't know. But. It's hard to trust. Then we started every... winning a shitload with the fucking this guy with vampire. He, yeah, we're having a good time, you know. And they're like, they're winning too much, and then they switched the fucking dealer out. Ah, uh, dude, that's when he was like, bat. Yeah, and just flew off. And then the other, we ended up like winning some money or whatever that night. It was good. Then the other night we go, and they just kept bringing in the cooler man, like <clears throat> this. This woman, they brought her in, and I was like, "You're the fucking cooler. I know it." She dealt herself blackjack twice in a row. What? And then we're like, all right, let's go to another table. So we go to another table. We start winning. They bring her in again. Are you serious? She deals herself blackjack twice in a row again. Wait, is this the dealer? Yeah. Oh, that's crazy. That sounds that yeah. sounds fraudulent. No, she was definitely a cooler, man. And here's the thing. Usually the dealer is like rooting for you as a player to win because they want you to win because you're going to tip them more and it's fun or whatever. Yeah. Like she was excited when she would beat us. She'd be like, yes. And I was like, I heard her say yes. And I was like, did you just say yes what? over there? I'm like, you are the cooler. Like, That's, what the fuck? That sounds like uh, they have their they have her family in a basement. And they're like, if you deal, if you deal yourself blackjack, we're going to let one of your members go. And then she deals it. She well, goes, yes. And then the other guy was like, he had worked in the movies as like an extra and like had some, a few bit parts or whatever. And he's like telling me the films he's in, but he was like just a pretty guy that was dumb as fuck. Like he the literally, dealer? oh yeah. He like, there was like three or four times where we had to be like, no dude, he won. And he's like, oh, he did. <laughs> and I'm like, dude, you're the, you're the authority, man, yeah. but you're the opposite of a cooler, but he was a good looking guy. So I think they were just like, yeah, we keep him around for his looks. Yeah. He, may, he, he may get a few hands wrong every night, but, uh, but he's a distraction. But God damn. We like looking at him. So, <laughs> but look at, look at the muscles in his arms as he throws out those cards. <laughs> look at the flex on those forearms. But, uh, yeah. So then we left there and, uh, we hop in the car and I'm like, man, the, the thing that I remember the most about our last trip was that, you know, we stopped at this rock shop. <gasps> what was that guy's name? The couple. Yeah. So uh, we stopped at the rock shop and then we got the green chili cheeseburger. Yeah. It's right? like, what is it? Like no, and, one of the best green chili burgers, right? Yeah. And, and we also stopped at White Sands where they tested a bunch of the nuclear weapons. Yeah. We got all the way to the point where it was like, do not pass this. Yeah, where it was like, we will shoot you if you go past this point. And then we took pictures there and we're like, we're out of here. Yeah, we got to go. But uh, yeah, so I pull into the rock shop and they're fucking closed, but they have the, but we pull in and I'm like, you know, this is one of those weird places where they live here. And I'm guessing, you know, there's dogs barking like they're going to come out. So yeah, this guy comes out and this gal, I see her around the corner. I'm like, hey, what's up, man? Remember me? I'm Zach. I was... But the guy looked like way smaller because remember that guy was fucking huge. He was big. Yeah. Shirtless the whole time. Oh, yeah. And really gray oh, in the yeah. hair. And and like smoke six. It's like and, Don or Daryl or something. I think it was Don. But anyways, so we hang out with these guys. The first time AJ and I go there. I go up and I'm like, hey, you know, remember me? My buddy and I were here on tour like four or five years ago, and and uh, he bought some of your radioactive fucking sand or yeah. whatever. And the guy goes, oh shit, man, uh, you must be thinking of Don or whatever. And and his wife fucking Melody or something, you know. And I'm like, oh shit, you know, uh, what's going on? And they're like, well, uh, bad news for old Don, man. He's fucking, he's dying, dude. He's got the what? cancer. So they're throwing him a big end of life party in San Diego. He's still kicking right now. But yeah, a few days ago, we just, you know, we had to throw his ass. We could hardly throw his ass into the car because he's Whoa. real sick, but we threw his ass into the car. They flew him out to San Diego and he's partying with a bunch of his family and friends out there before he, you know, bites the dust. <laughs> I'm like, you think it's all that radioactive sand? No shit, man. I was thinking about That's that. so much of that. And then, yeah, so they sell it by the gram, and this sand is like when the nuclear first nuclear bomb that they tested, they had it on this metal tower, and it blew up. 
and it melted a bunch of the sand into this weird mineral type glass stuff that AJ bought some. Yeah, of it. I do have it, but I can't remember what it's called. I know it's a tactite. Yeah, it's like it has some sort of like gimmicky name. Yeah. I almost feel like nucleotide or something. Or, yeah, I'll have to or trinitite. Trinitite. Yeah, you're right. Yeah. Uh, Because Trinity was the first site that they did the nuclear blast on or whatever. So, yeah, and uh, AJ has some of it. Yeah, I have a a small piece of it. It might kill him, too. But But uh, mine is in the bag originally. I don't think I've ever taken it out. And it's inside a glass jar that is also inside of a case. That guy, Don, he showed me a very large piece at one point. And he goes, you can still see the wires in that. You want to hold it? It's still hot. And I was like, fuck no. Fuck no, I don't want to hold that. I don't even want to know that it's still radiating heat. You shouldn't be near that. Yeah, so AJ and I hung out with this guy and his wife forever. I went and peed in their weird trailer in the back. And like, yeah, uh, but no, I was looking for it. And then, yeah, you know, he uh, he's biting the dust. Jesus. So, so That's yeah, a bummer. Uh, Lisa and Joe, though, they bought some rocks for their backyard <laughs> that like we like immediately stopped and they bought salsa and they were just like put in the jar in the back seat and it hit the rocks and just like salsa explosion in the back seat. Ah, uh, salsa rocks all over the new rocks. But, uh, Did yeah, you guys get the green chili burgers. Uh, so yeah. So and then I'm like, I don't know. I'm like the green chili burger should be ahead. And we stop and the town is, uh, I think it's San Antonio, New Mexico. I think so. It's not too far. It's literally right before you get to I 25 number again, seven right? in America. It's called like the buckhorn, exchange or something or buckhorn something it was on like the buckhorn exchange is like a corporate dive store or something. dash diners well, or whatever it well was. it was on that but it was also like i think esquire or variety listed it like number seven on the 20 best or 20 burgers you have to try before oh, yeah. you die in america or something yeah. it is a good burger it's a very good burger i had one again and it did not disappoint this time as well everybody Really enjoyed their yeah. their burger. And they put yellow mustard on a burger with green chili, which I thought was super strange when I was there, but it is actually fucking awesome. I liked wow. it. Yeah, at first you're like, I don't think this is going to work. So, yeah, so then uh, we ate there. We made it to the to the casino, and then we actually went in and checked out this new the new comedy club in Albuquerque. Oh. Uh, dry Heat. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Ran by uh, Sarah Kennedy and uh, her wife Kelly, uh, run it together, and uh, it's fucking awesome, man. Is it? Is it open yet? They're still working on it. No, it's open. Nice. And they're they're doing stuff. So uh, no, I hope to try and I'd love to go do a weekend down there because it's like just a it's like a little black box that holds like 50, 60 people. It's super tight and uh, and just I don't you know like a perfect little comedy room. Yeah, that was cool. And all the New Mexico comics, it was kind of like a showcase of of New Mexico comics. Wow. So were there a bunch of people? Wait, so you got to see the show there before the casino show? Yeah. So the casino show was at nine. So we got there at like 630 and they actually had an early show because there was some sort of art walk that started at 630. So okay. we, I did just like a little guest and uh, Lisa did a guest and uh, they had like a showcase of locals. And uh, Zach Abeda, who uh, you probably met him at Trinidad. Yeah, uh, he uh, he got shot. What? Yeah, he they roasted him on 420. Like his friends, they did a roast for him, and he was out front. And he yeah, he got shot and had to at the roast. It. Yeah, out front of the venue, like uh, it's Albuquerque, man. <laughs> Whoa. Yeah. So uh, that's crazy. Yeah. So I'm glad he's all right, and it was good to see him. And I, I uh, got to catch kind of his set that he's, uh, you know, it, him telling the story about everything that happened. And yeah, no, I'm just happy he's all right. And yeah, yeah, all the New Mexico comics though were really funny though. It was, it was a good show. And uh, yeah, and then ran up to the casino, did that in the, the cavernous room where it was. You know, classic. There's a lot, there's a lot going on. There's two uh, two uh, young aspiring comics that were 21 hanging out after the show. Did they also? How many people were on the show at the casino? It was just me and Lisa, and then they had this guy go out, and he was like, "I'm uh, I met him uh, beforehand, and I'm like, oh, you're announcing us. Cool. Do you do you like public speaking? Do you talk in a microphone?' And he's like, "Yeah, you know, I uh." 
He's like, I ran game shows over Zoom and stuff for the casino here what? and stuff. Yeah, I can't remember what he said. So I was like, oh, cool. This guy's got it down. And then he, yeah. and then I'm like, here's what I want for my intro. And Lisa's like, here's what I want for my intro. And and here's my first and how you say my last name. And he walks out for Lisa and goes, hey, you know, thank you for coming out to the casino, blah, blah. And he's like kind of talking far back from the mic. So he's kind of hard to hear. And he's like, thank you for coming out to the casino. And uh yeah, and we're real excited, you know, to have comedy back. And tonight, you know, this next comedy, real happy to have her here. Give it up for Lisa. No last name. No credits. No last name. Lisa brings her out. She does great. You know, the room's fucking, it's just fucking cavernous. But, yeah. you know, she's working it. She's killing it. She does a good job. And then fucking, I, I'm like, oh, he just forgot her shit. Oh, right? no. So then he goes out and he goes, hell yeah, give it up for Lisa, everybody. Are you guys ready for your headliner? And they're like, woo. And he's like, give it up for Zach. <laughs> Wait, no. no credits. <laughs> no last name. Nothing? So, yeah, so give it up like, for Zach. And not like I forgot to ask or I forgot no, his like last I name. told just... him I think that's his style where he's give just it up like, for I think they're like, Zach. I think they're like, these aren't comedians that have credits and have done things. They're just like the person over from you in the casino, you know? Give it up for Zach. Give it up for Zach. He's he'll been be, playing blackjack yeah, all be, night long. It sounds like it was a fun trip, though. Yeah, it was. And then followed it off with the Airbnb, or the, I don't want to say Airbnb, but it's an actual bed and breakfast Yeah, in Montrose. Have you ever done that show? I did, and I thoroughly enjoyed it. Oh, it's awesome. BK, uh, BK Shira and I went up and did it, and it was so much fun. No, I love that that show and that bed and breakfast. And, and the woman that runs the bed and breakfast Tendra yeah. is amazing. Yeah. She's so sweet. So we did that in the backyard, and that was kind of a fun uh, party. And oh, then, yeah. She was telling me they move it to the backyard in the summer. Yeah. I haven't done that one, but she was like, you should come out and do the backyard. Run. Sometimes they do it at a casino. but uh, This one was at like a... Um, I, it just seemed like a, a hotel space or something that we were in. It maybe be fun to do that run with uh, Marciana and Megan and you and I just split the money. Yeah, that would be actually a lot of fun because then we do it and then, yeah, we're just making a vacation out of it. Yeah, it's just a, yeah. Yeah, but uh, fun hang. No, so that that was great. And then, uh, yeah, that that Airbnb, it's uh, they got a big thing when you walk in there because that's where Quentin Tarantino stayed, uh, where they oh. when they when they filmed the Hateful Eight. So, it, did what, did you stay in the bathtub room or the sh- or room with the shower, shower room? room? I stayed in the shower okay. room. If you ever stay in the bathtub room, that was his because he likes to take baths. Apparently, what? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Likes to look at his feet, I'm guessing. I don't ah. fucking know. But yeah, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> fun fun fact about the Airbnb. The fucking the air feet and feet. Holy shit. Yeah. <laughs> the feet and feet. Oh. Well, it sounds like it's almost time to shut her down. Yeah. I don't know. Um, it's been fun. It has been fun. Yeah. Uh, 